To prevent kidney stones, you just need to make these changes. Let's talk about them. This actually comes from uh, somebody on our Facebook group, Erica, I'm doing this for you. I like it. She's like, you know, this is very common. So what I'm doing with people all day long is helping them change their habits. I ain't talking about oxalate all day. That's not what I'm doing. It's a very small part of what I do. This is how I can do it for 26 years. What I'm doing is here comes a person. They've had less than nourishing eating habits. They got a kidney stone. They are highly motivated to make a change so they never go through that hell again. And now they're, they want to pay attention to what they're doing. So basically Erica's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like a seven year old with a debit card at the grocery store. Where do I start to make changes? It's a great question. And it's funny because I always say this, why are we eating like five year olds at a birthday party? Why are we eating like that? I mean, we're 50, 60, 70, 80, 40, 30, whatever. At some point, you know, we get the wake up call where we just shouldn't be stuffing our food that you will find at a five year old birthday party. And when people first get a kidney stone, that's really the first time they've noticed their eating habits because they have never had to deal with anything. They haven't had any consequence. Typically, human beings need a consequence before they change. It's just what we need, myself included. When I got cancer, I made a lot of changes after that, myself included. This is why I'm, it's so important to me to talk about this. And when you go through a harrow, harrowing experience, whether it's cancer, kidney stones, diabetes, all these illnesses, folks, all these illnesses, when you go through that negative consequence, you really look at your life. For me, it wasn't about eating. I've always eaten pretty darn healthy. It was more about how I was living my life and the stress I was under, all, all kinds of things. So I changed things personally. Um, and it's been wonderful. And also, though, I know how hard it is to change. And I know how this wake-up call for you is very scary and um, very overwhelming and daunting. I understand all that because this shit doesn't come overnight. So I'm very patient and empathetic when it comes to change. And I think that's why people love working with me so much because as a human being who, you know, always wanted certain changes in her life but didn't make them until she was faced honestly with death, uh, I understand. I really understand where you're coming from. Also though, to the detriment of you, when you tell me that stuff is hard or you can't or you won't, I always say, let's sit down and talk about what I've been through and what I still do anyway, okay? So I still have sickness uh, based upon all my surgeries from my cancer. Uh, there's a lot of things. I, I, I have a lot of malabsorption issues, a lot of things. It still does not stop me on most days of working out. It does not stop me from meal prepping. It does not stop me because I have been so sick in my life. It propels me to go forward anyway. Now, if you're down on a couch, you're not going nowhere. Okay. So if you're really sick, you, you know what I'm saying. There's days where people are like, oh, I feel a little sluggish. Let's not go to the gym. That's never a day for me. I may feel less than, but it's not putting me in bed. I'm going because tomorrow could bring me in the bed and I can't. So that's also the deal about working with me. There's not an excuse I haven't heard. There's not an excuse I've wanted to give myself. I go anyway. And I think that's why people find me inspirational, or at least I hope so. Um, so that's, uh, so it's a good and bad. I know what you've been through because I've been sick too, but I know what you've been through and you can still do a little bit. So I'm always going to push you to do a little bit. So there's that. Okay. So how do we get to change? We start slowly. My advice goes against everything the diet industry will teach you. Quick and easy is bullshit, folks. Don't ever, ever fall again because you've spent your whole adult life falling for this quick and easy fix. Y'all have done the slim fast, you've done the meta fast, whatever they're called. You've done paleo, you've done this, you've done that. And unless you made it your lifestyle, 
a style for life. You've been on and off diets for the rest of for your whole life. That stops here. That stops here. And maybe Jeff and I will never be rich because of what I say. This ain't quick and easy. But we sleep like babies at night because what we know works, what we know is true, and what we're trying to do is teach you to slow your roll. Lifestyle change as far as eating, six months to a year. Don't shut off the channel. Don't click off. I'm going to go find somebody who says quick and easy. It don't exist, folks. And the damage you're doing to your body and your emotional life here, the shame and all the things you give yourself every time you fall off something because it's unsustainable, you're killing yourself. Knock it off. Six months to a year. What do I base that on? 26 years of experience working for people. And anybody who's listening to this video that has worked with me, tell me, did it not take six months to a year? Six months to a year to completely feel like I love my lifestyle. I'm used to everything. I have it. I get it. I'm never going back. Six months to a year. Where to start? Erica says, shut up, Jill. How do I start? Start slowly. Start with water. The number one thing you can do to prevent kidney stones, no matter what, is drink more water. Do that. Jill, I can only drink four cups a day. I don't care. Do four cups a day this week, every day. Add five cups a week next week. Add five cups the third week. But Jill, I can go to six cups. God bless, go to six cups the third week. Slowly get there. Once you got water, check it off. Next, go to salt. Uh, Erica, when you go to the grocery store with your seven-year-old debit card, I just want you, you don't have to do anything except this. Look at where salt is. Jill, I don't use the salt shaker. Good for you. That ain't why you're having too much salt in your urine. You're eating it. Turn it around the cans. Turn around the packages. Guess what? Don't have a nutrition label because I don't need to. Fruits and vegetables. No salt. Very little salt. Hang out there. Stay away from spinach. Okay? Hang out there. No salt. No added sugar. They're your best friends. Start with water. Go to salt. When you go to salt next, you're going to lower your urine calcium if it's a problem for you. You're going to pee more and get rid of that midsection bloat. So you're going to pee more just from lowering sodium. And you're going, you want quick and easy weight loss? Lower your sodium. You'll lose two to five pounds in seven days. Two to five pounds because you're going to be peeing a hell of a lot more. And the extra water you drink, it ain't going to be sitting here in your extracellular stuff and you feel bloated. It's not going to. You're going to pee it out because wherever salt goes, water follows. Okay? So that's really important. Start with water. Get that down. Go to salt. So when you're going, Erica, in the grocery store, look at all... When it says bone broth, low salt, keep looking because every low salt bone broth or chicken broth will all have, low salt could be 380 milligrams of sodium. The next bone broth thing could say 120. The next chicken uh, broth could say 35. Keep looking till you find the lowest. Don't just look at what the front of the package says. It lies. It lies. It may be just like, just like soy sauce, low sodium. Well, it ain't a thousand. Now it's 950. That ain't low sodium, folks. So I'm just saying you have to learn to look at the nutrition label. Jill, it takes so long. It takes five seconds, five seconds. Then you get your, your staple. So you never have to look again. You know. Okay. So you get your staples and you'll feel so much better. Start with water. Go to salt. Third, go to calcium. You got to get it every day. Oh, Jill, I'm worried about Oxley. You worried about Oxley? Get your calcium needs met. 1,000 for men and women, 1,200 for postmenopausal women. No more than 500 milligrams at a time. Space it out throughout the day. So that's where you're going to start. The oxalate, you're done. Get rid of spinach, almonds, cashews, chia seeds, like five foods. That's it. You don't have to worry about it. Calcium is more important. And then you pay attention to the meat protein, and then you'll do, you get rid of your added sugars to lower it. The Kidney Stone Diet goals are at kidneystonediet.com, the start page. But 
let's walk through the grocery store with Erica and her seven-year-old emotional life that she's got going on as far as the food goes. Number one, Erica, I would tell you, do not go down the snack aisle. Do not do it. Don't do it. Because what, so a, a seven-year-old is going to want to buy chips and dips and cookies and crackers and all the things. Don't go down that aisle. I love it, Jill. I know, Erica. I know you do. I know you do. Don't walk through it. When we're at home and we're having a craving or we're watching Netflix or whatever, we want something. And it ain't going to be friggin' Brussels sprouts, by the way. It's not going to be that. You're not going to tell your partner to go make you a salad so you can watch a comedy. That's not happening. We want crap food, non-nutritious food. Look, sometimes you're going to want that, folks. It's okay. But if they're trigger foods and you're going to eat a whole sleeve of cookies instead of two, don't bring them in your house. So the first thing I'm going to say is don't bring those foods in your house that trigger you. Can you get a lower added sugar, lower sodium snack food that makes you happy? Air pop popcorn. Make it on the stove. I have all kinds of no salt seasonings on my website to put on uh, popcorn. I have a dessert ebook, snack and desserts. Make some at home. So you got them right there. You whip them up on Sunday and you have it throughout the week. Kidneystonediet.com for that. So I would tell somebody who's just starting, stop going in that snack aisle. There ain't nothing good for you there. Pay attention to your fluids, your salt, and your um, uh and your calcium needs start there, but you've got to start thinking that you're a grown person and grown people at our ages should really start worrying about nourishing their body and not so much their mind because it's our brain that's telling us to do certain things and we have to be stronger than the message in our brain and don't think that's ever going to go away. The brain is always going to tell you something that you want, you're craving, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to be strong enough to push through it most of the time. It doesn't mean you can't also indulge here and there. But for the most part, leave your seven-year-old little heart at home and bring your grown-ass adult self to the grocery store. And we'll talk more about this in other videos. We will. It's very difficult. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, making this short, it's, it's a lot. And this is why also I say private consult, go on the Facebook page, stay on this YouTube channel. There's all kinds of things here. Subscribe to the channel, please. That helps us. People always say, what can I do? Please subscribe to the channel. It helps us show up higher in the ratings. And it takes a minute, folks. That's my biggest advice. Be kind to yourself. Be uh, just be kind to yourself while you're going through this. You're not going to be perfect, and that's really boring. I wouldn't want you to. You have a bad day, get right back up the next day. Start all over again. It's going to be okay. And that's another reason why six months to a year. You're going to have starts and stops. Perfectly fine. Join the accountability group, too. That's what we talk about there. How do we get back on track once we've fallen off? That's what that support group is about. That's it, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And if you're out there with a question, the number is 773 789 eight seven six four and on behalf of jill and little finn over there thanks Need for a baby. In, and we'll see you next week thanks guys thanks erica great question